You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. G'day, I'm Bruce Hitchcock, and you're listening to the Weekly Batuta News Bulletin. Coming to you from Koala Mattress Studios in downtown Batuta. Joining me in the studio today is Wendell Hussey. Yes, hello to you, wherever you may be listening inside the Diamantina Shire or outside of it. This week, the bulletin is brought to you by Tough Mudder. Ah, uh, yeah, something that's probably a little bit more in your wheelhouse than mine, I'd say, Del. I'm well past rolling in mud and running through dangly electric wires for fun. To be honest, nine holes in a walk down to the Royal is strenuous enough for me these days. My knees haven't been the same since I won the premiership with the Dolphins in 78. A historic premiership, though, Bruce. But yes, you might be right. It's probably more for our listeners who are in slightly better shape and consumers of honest regional news from outside of the Diamantina Shire. It's 20 kilometres of obstacles and challenges, so sign up and have a crack at one of the courses. They're on in Melbourne the 20th and 21st of October and Sydney the 17th and 18th of November. Head to toughmutter.com.au for more information. Now, into the news. Here are the top stories from the Batuta Advocate, the country's oldest and most respected newspaper. Starting in the political sphere this week, and Uncle Tony's in the headlines. Another week, another Uncle Tony headline. In similar fashion to some of his closer coalition allies, Uncle Tony has declared that he's found love with a younger woman who he met through his work in politics. The Special Envoy on Indigenous Affairs has returned from this year's Koori knockout, rocking a Mate Ma Tonga jersey and the twin braids after falling madly in love with an Islander girl who had some cousins playing for Griffith. He said to us, I'm loved up, true God. She might be the one, Docs. He's really grown into the role of special envoy. And in news around town this week, a local millennial has hatched a bold plan to short the housing market. In an opportunistic play, local 25-year-old Courtney Fisher has seized upon the fruit terror gripping the nation and has decided to start poking needles into the walls of homes around town. Courtney is just one of hundreds of thousands of Australians currently locked out of the housing market. This is despite having at least triple the savings that her parents did at her age when they were buying houses. She explained that if a bunch of needles could cripple a market with a sustainable level of supply and demand, then it was worth a crack on one that's manipulated against young millennials like her. And it sounds like it just might have started working. There have been reports coming in that a vast number of fellow first home buyers have had a similar idea, with almost half the houses in Australian capital cities unable to sell over the weekend due to reports of needle contamination. One of our readers did point out that the smarter play might have been to put the needles in avocados rather than houses. But that's the benefit of hindsight. Anyway, we'll be endeavouring to keep you updated on the story as it unfolds. And in other parts of Batuta, we covered a story about a fitness enthusiast. A young woman spoke to us about how much mileage she's getting out of her 2015 Tough Mudder shirt. She's still wearing it pretty much every time she goes to the gym. Doesn't wear anything else, reportedly. When we spoke to young Gwen Harmison, she tried to brush her shirt off as just a random one she likes to wear. But under some targeted lines of questioning, she did admit that she does like to pop it on just to let everyone know how fit she is. A little bit like all those people that like to wear representative gear from that time they played for a good team once. Yeah, a bit like that, I think. She did go on to say that she's into functional and explosive fitness, not like some of these other athleisure-wearing drones on the treadmill. Apparently, injury has kept her out of Tough Mudder the last couple of years, but she's going to be giving it a whirl this year. Good on her. Now, internationally this week, the Miss Universe beauty pageant is facing stinging criticism. The competition has been slammed for always favouring contestants from planet Earth. It all started with social media commentators from the Andromeda Galaxy taking aim at Miss Universe judges and organisers, calling them out for their gross oversight of not including any non-Earthling contestants. Using hashtags such as NotMyUniverse and FuckPlanetism, the campaign gained momentum after it was revealed that every single Miss Universe winner to date had been from planet Earth. Brian from Centaurus A said, It's completely unacceptable. I mean, it's the year 2700860. You'd think we'd have some reflective representation by now. And Kathy from ULASJ1120 plus 0641 agreed, saying, I mean, come on. Of all the planets in all the, I don't know, 100 billion galaxies, how come Earth always wins? Mm, it's about time things changed, I think. And sports news now. It was obviously a big week for the country. In the AFL, the West Coast Eagles got the job done. And as a result, the nation collectively laughed at Eddie Maguire. We broke the story as it happened. 
when the country exhaled in relief as Collingwood personality Eddie Maguire went home once again disappointed from the MCG. It was a thing of beauty watching the cameras cut to him after that last goal from the Eagles. Something the entire country can get around, Magpies fans aside, of course. And in the rugby league, it was a busy Monday for the Sydney Roosters organisation. Very hectic, we've been told, with a frantic few hours of document shredding in the aftermath of the one-sided grand final victory. Following the Sydney Roosters' 21-6 win over the Melbourne Storm, staff members ordered to watch the fort at the Roosters HQ were immediately told to begin destroying any form of a paper trail. This included any third-party contracts, player contracts, and of course, any minutes of any meetings with Eastern Suburbs business owners that may or may not have resulted in a couple of boys getting a house built from down on the beach. And we've been told by insiders at the club that could afford to bring Cooper Cronk there on a million dollars a year that they managed to get rid of all the evidence before the NRL could get there. And who says money can't buy your premierships? People who aren't living in 2018, that's who. Anyway, that's it for the News Wrap this week. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the podcast in order to get your weekly fix of real, unfiltered and unwavering regional news. Until next week, I'm Bruce Hitchcock. And I'm Wendell Hussey.